Yes, one of Mr. Smith's kitchen, Brian, Mr. Smith, kitchen, as always. And uh, today, I thought we'd do some baking, and <clears throat> I thought we would do something that uh, is incredibly cool. So, about a week or two ago, uh, we had one of our customers bring us in some cupcakes. And it was a variety pack of cupcakes from uh, one of the local bakeries in Westerville, where I work. And one of them was a banana split cupcake. And I'm here, they were mini cupcakes, but I'm here to tell you, it was outstanding. It was the coolest tasting cupcake I had had in a very long time. And I thought, I've got to try and make these. So today, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to try and make them. Um, I, I looked up a handful of recipes and <sighs> kind of took a little from some of them. And then some of them I just walked on by because I, they weren't what I was looking for, so to speak. And I, I think these are gonna um, kind of knock our socks off a little bit. I hope, that's my plan at any rate. Whether it happens, who knows? They may turn out horrible, but I doubt it. Um, I think this recipe is pretty solid. But that being said, banana split cupcakes is what we're gonna do today. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If this is your first video, I hope you get something out of this. Check out some of my other ones, my dessert videos. I, not a one of them's been a horrible one. Um, and, and they're all really good, solid, uh, recipes and you you can take them anywhere you know make friends if you're returning thank you uh, if you're a new subscriber thank you and welcome uh, we are growing in leaps and bounds all the time which is awesome and I can't believe that there's that many people out there that, that want to hang with me um, makes me feel kind of special and that's it, it, you give me your time and what more could you ask for for that um, that's a precious commodity so um, don't forget to like subscribe and share all of that gets us out in the algorithm so that way we can uh, keep growing our neighborhood you know being good neighbors making some good food you know hanging out and having a good time that's awesome uh, at least it is for me I love hanging out with you guys uh, comments always welcome just keep them nice keep them friendly it's okay to disagree just think before you type um, be civil basically and uh, last but not least uh, I will give you all your measurements of cups tablespoons teaspoons we also do grams that way everybody can play along if there happens to be a third way to measure let me know I will do my best to try to include that also the more the merrier uh, so that being said let's get down to the counter and uh, we'll make some banana split cupcakes all right hold on for me one second okay we're down here at the counter go team and uh, let's go over some things you'll need first. Uh, you'll need at least a bowl, two, or two bowls. I'm gonna use my stand mixer. If you don't have a stand mixer, that's fine. You can use a hand mixer. Um, you could probably even do this by hand, although, I mean, you're gonna need some arm strength. Um, and uh, most importantly, scale. Scale promotes accuracy and consistency every time. And with cooking, you don't need so much one unless you're doing some fancy French dish that requires one. But with baking, I feel it's kind of necessary all the way around. Um, and it's much easier to measure in grams that way, uh, in my opinion. All right, so enough on the, the uh, scale lecture. I haven't given it in a while, and but they are necessary, and I think you should have one for baking. That's just my opinion, but if you don't have one, 15 bucks, it's yours. Yeah, hands down, they're not expensive. You will buy more expensive bowls than that. So, first things we wanna do, we wanna put our oven at 350 degrees. Um, that's important, and that way we got it warming up and cycling. Next thing we wanna do is we're gonna take, this makes 12 cupcakes, this recipe does, and uh, we went ahead and put our liners in. Now, you have, I've seen some people say in their recipes, <coughs> excuse me, I got one heck of a cough. This one didn't, but you can spray your paper cups with a, a non-stick spray, some vegetable spray, uh, it, which just helps when you peel them off. Um, you, your cupcake may not stick to it, yeah, it won't stick to it, but I, I've never had a cupcake stick. Um, so I don't, but if you want to, great, you can. So we've got that prepared, got our 12 cupcake, uh, liners and the cupcake pan so where do we start we're gonna start with a recipe which I have right here hidden behind the mixer and we're gonna start by making the cupcakes this is a cupcake when we get done with the cake portion we're gonna let them cool we're gonna scoop out a little bit of the center we're gonna put some chocolate syrup in there then we're gonna make some frosting to put on top of that 
Then we're going to make a chocolate ganache to put on top of that. Then we're going to take some whipped topping, which you can make your own by store pot, however you like to do it. Put a little bit on top of the chocolate ganache and then top it with a cherry. I think they're going to just be absolutely amazing. So anyhow, let's get started. We're going to start with dry ingredients first. So the first thing we need in a bowl, um, use a medium, small bowl, whatever suits your nature. I have got one third cup, 160 grams of just regular old all-purpose flour. To this, I am going to add uh, two and a half tablespoons, 25 grams of cornstarch, you know, which is a tricky character. Look at that. I mean, every time it sticks to the bottom of the bowl. Why? I don't know, but it does on a regular basis. A little bit of effort, boom, done. And I promise this video I will not I will try to make it not very long um, but I, I want you to get the full benefit of everything and then after that we are going to add one and a quarter teaspoon five grams of baking powder in there real quick also likes to stick to the bowl I think it's just because they're the slightest bit of moisture with cornstarch and baking powder um, just makes them stick yeah and these were dry dishes but it's a little humid in the house so we're going to add three quarter a teaspoon, three grams of baking soda. Both of those are leaveners. They'll help things rise, right? So that, that way we know we're gonna get some lift out of our cake. And if you ever wanna see something cool, put a little vinegar in with some baking soda, it bubbles. Um, it makes bubbles. So we got that in there. And then the last thing we're gonna to add to our dry is an eighth of a teaspoon, a half a gram of salt. My particular scale doesn't do that third number, so I had no way of measuring that, so I just had to run with an eighth of a teaspoon and put it in there and hope that it's really a half a gram, but I'm sure it is. So we got all that in there, and then we're just gonna give this a good whisk, get it mixed up and playing well, right? Because that's what we do. And we'll set that to the side. Get it off the sides there. Set it to the side, we're done. Now we can move on to the wet ingredients. And like I said, you can use a hand mixer for this. There's absolutely no reason why you can't. Um, I just wanted to use my stand mixer because I have it and I can. And first thing we're gonna put into this is five tablespoons of butter right here, which is 70 grams. Put that in there and I've got that at room temperature. Um, you want it at least soften, sitting out for about a half hour, 45 minutes. And to that, we are going to add three quarters of a cup, 150 grams of just plain old white granulated sugar. And then we're going to mix this on medium speed till the butter and the sugar incorporate together and become light and fluffy or the consistency of mashed potatoes. So we are light and fluffy, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Is that it, they, they say light and fluffy, I, and it took me a while to figure it out because nobody ever says, well, this is what it should look like. You know, it's always just light, mixed to light and fluffy, and then you move on. Um, but I'm gonna show you, so that way you know. And what we're looking for, let me scrape her down here real quick because there's not a whole lot in here. See that, that's the consistency of a mashed potato. That is light and fluffy, just so you know. And that's pretty much everything we have uh, in the bowl. So like I said, it's not much, you know, comparatively to like a big cake or something like that. All right, so the next things we need to add in here, and it doesn't say to uh, add them in one at a time, so I'm not going to in this recipe. I have got two thirds cup of smashed bananas, all right, because bananas are in a banana split, right? And I, I smashed them up. They were, uh, you know, a few days past their prime, so to speak, starting to brown. And we're going to put that in there. And that two-thirds of a cup is 220 grams, about two medium-sized bananas. And then we are going to add, <clears throat> uh, as soon as I find it, whoa, there it is. That shows you how prepared I was. We're going to add a third a cup of buttermilk. Now, if you don't have buttermilk, which um, is 75 milliliters, let's say you don't have any buttermilk, you can use regular whole fat milk and you can add like a teaspoon of lemon juice to it and wait about five minutes 
and then it will turn sour like buttermilk and then you'll have buttermilk or I buy powdered buttermilk it lasts forever on the fridge and the last thing we're gonna add to this is gonna be two large eggs a hundred grams and we're just gonna put those in there like I said normally it's add an ingredient mix it add an ingredient mix it eggs one at a time but not according to this recipe so now we're just gonna mix this until it's well combined combined we've got everything mixed up and it looks like just a interesting mess in there but that's all right it's the bananas it, it, it's throwing me for a loop but it is combined it is mixed we are in good shape we'll give the sides a good scrape as always that way we know everything really is mixed up see we weren't quite mixed up in there so we'll go ahead and give that a turn mixers stand mixers hand mixers all the same um, there's always a dead spot in the bowl with stand mixers a majority of them it's the bottom of the bowl so we just want to give that a quick stir real quick and then we can move on so what we're going to do next is we're going to add our dry ingredients to our wet ingredients and all we're going to do is we're going to do it while it's mixing i know you're thinking brian you're going to make a mess probably that's okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn it on low my whisk out of the bowl and then I'm just simply going to slowly pour this in that way we know it gets mixed all right we are combined and after I after I mixed it on low so I could get the powder on there or the powder the dry mix in there I went ahead and turned it up that way we could get it combined at, at a decent pace you know it's it, it reminds me a lot of banana bread to some extent, um, which I find really kind of nifty. So now we got to go ahead and get our paddle scraped off here. Just like such. Give everything a good turn in the good scrape down here. Give it a scrape down. It's like a smack down only for a bowl. Got that. There is that. We are looking good. I'll show you real quick. There is what we are looking like. Like I said, it's almost like uh, banana bread, but not quite. Yeah, there's a little more to banana bread. But we got that mixed up. So now all we have left to do, this is how quick and easy this part is. Yeah, thank goodness I remember to turn the oven on on time. Now, if you have a scale, you can measure these out, but I really don't know offhand what the weights would be. I mean, I could find out real quick. All right, let me find out real quick. Let me see what it would be. Uh, I'm not going to measure them out. Well, I mean, I should, but I'm not going to. But I can tell us what the weight's going to be. Because I know that this particular bowl weighs 789 grams. So if I turn my scale on, wait for it to set, put that on there, and I would need to... It would be 785 grams in here. And I'd just divide that by 12, and that would give me the amount I could put into each uh, each cup. But with the recipe, it said just go ahead and take an ice cream scoop, and which is what I'm going to do. And what I'll do is I will put an ice cream scoop's worth in each container and then just go back through once I get a scoop in each container and evenly distribute this. So if you don't have it, that's pretty much what you're going to do. But you don't want to go above two thirds full, right? Because if you go above two thirds full, then all of a sudden you're making a muffin and not a cupcake and it'll pop out of the, out of the cup, so to speak. There we are. There's our batter. Now we're going to see what kind of a guesser I am because that was really strange for me i'm not gonna lie to not use my scale to make the cupcake to fill the batter with fill the cupcake uh liners with so but i mean they're two-thirds full we are uh, where we need to be i think i hope at any rate i used all the batter and i got 12 cupcakes but let's talk about what we're going to do as far as baking them goes i'm going to go ahead and put them in my 350 degree oven 
and I want to say 15 to 20 minutes. Um, the original recipe says 15 to 18, but I know my oven well enough to know it's going to take 20 minutes. Every cupcake I've ever made, and I've made a few thousand of them, believe it or not, out of this oven, takes 20 minutes. So I'll start checking them at 15, but I'm almost going to guarantee 20. So when they come out of the oven, uh, we'll uh, talk about what we're going to do next. See you in a second. Okay, so our uh, muffins are out of the oven, and muffins, cheese of Pete, our cupcakes, that's what I get for talking about muffins, are out of the oven. And all I did was take a toothpick and poke them in the center, just like such, pull it out, and it should come out clean, right? Um, it's okay if it's got some crumb on it, I don't know if you can see it right there, but there's a little bit of crumb, and that's okay, because they're still baking, you know, being it out of the oven. And here, let me, I'll bring them up to you so that way you can see what we got going on this pan is still incredibly hot right there they are like that um, I think they look amazing but do you see how they're still within the paper that's what you're looking for they've got a nice dome on them but they're still within the paper and as they cool they'll drop a little bit if you fill it more than two-thirds full it'll come out onto the pan and it'll look more like a muffin than a cupcake so we're gonna let those cool for about 10 minutes and then I'll go ahead and take them out of the pan and then I'm gonna go ahead and get set up so we can make our icing. So when I come back, we're gonna go ahead and make our icing. All right, hold on for me for just one second. All right, so we got everything we need to make our icing and it's literally just four ingredients. Buttercream icing is the easiest icing to make. Where it gets tricky is density of your icing for what you wanna do. Um, like if you're icing a cake, you may want it not quite as dense if you were doing a cupcake or making flowers or things of that nature. Um, so yeah, it's something you definitely want to play with. But this is just pretty much a straightforward um, how you know uh, soft or hard do you want your icing. So to our mixer, we're going to put in one cup, which is two six, 228 grams of butter. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just gonna cream this butter, all right? We gotta get it smooth. And this butter is at, it, it's softened. It's not room, quite room temperature yet. All right, so we got our butter creamed and softened. My, or creamed. Now my butter wasn't completely softened. And so as you saw just a second ago, it, it was bouncing all over the place. And that's okay, because it'll soften as it mixes. Fr friction. Um, does amazing things, which is why you want your butter to be softened, not room temperature, when you're making icing, or it can make your icing incredibly soft by the time you're set and done. You don't want it cold, but you don't want it room temperature. So we're going to go ahead and scrape our bowl down, just like such, and then ugh, get that off the spatula there right quick, and to this, we're going to add one and a half teaspoons, six grams of vanilla extract. And we're going to add one quarter teaspoon, uh, one gram of salt. All right, and that, what that salt does, it's not much salt. It's not like you're gonna taste it, but what it does is it'll bring out all the flavors of the powdered sugar and the vanilla. And we're just gonna run this till it's combined. We've got that combined. Go ahead and give this a good scrape. It never hurts to scrape. You know, that, that way you know you've got everything mixed. No dead spots, just like before, in the bottom of your bowl. You know, everything's together. That, that's important. Now, here's another important thing that nobody really ever talks about when making icing, at least not from anybody I've ever watched or anything like that. Because um, most of my experience has come from watching other bakers um, bake and, and I've paid attention and learned things from them um, like I hope you're learning things from me as we bake together so now the next ingredient we're gonna do and we're gonna put in this is going to be uh, the powdered sugar I've got three cups 360 grams of powdered sugar the other ingredient I have is I have three tablespoons 40 milliliters of heavy whipping cream right here and I'm gonna put a cup of powdered sugar in here and I'm going to mix this but 
I am going to mix this on stir to start, the lowest setting you have on your hand mixer if that's what you're using, so we don't get powdered sugar everywhere. But And then I'll turn it up to two, but I'm not gonna take it any higher than two. You, you want to mix your icing slow. That way um, you don't get, you minimize the amount of air that you put in there. That's why we're using a paddle attachment. And going forward, I'm not gonna do this on anything higher than two. It'll make it creamy. You don't want to rush it though. You don't want to get air in it. That's how you get air pockets. And I think it messes with the flavor of the icing. Now, I may not use all three tablespoons of heavy cream either. It's just gonna depend on what it's like after I put one or two in. Yeah, and then if I think it's still too dense, then I'll add the third. But now I've got that mixed up. And here's where it varies from person to person. Some people will scrape this down now, I do not. I do two cups, then I add a little heavy cream, then I scrape it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my second cup in there, and after this mixes in, I'll scrape, put some heavy, or I'll put my heavy cream in, scrape, and repeat until I'm done with all the powdered sugar, right? So I only need one more thing of powdered sugar in there. All right, so. I've got all three cups of powdered sugar in there, and I've got one and a half ta uh, tablespoons, roughly, of uh, the uh, heavy cream in there. So before I call this done and complete, I'll go ahead and scrape my bowl down because that's what we do. But then I want to, I want to kind of, you know. What I'm looking for now is how dense is it? Is it going to go through my piping bag? Because we're going to pipe this on. And I personally think this is a little dense still. So I'm going to go ahead and probably put almost another tablespoon of uh, the cream in there. That way it's a, it's a little softer to the touch. Yeah, I, I may not use the full uh, tablespoon and a half. I'm gonna start out with about half that and mix that in and see where we're at. All right, I just went, I didn't add anything else to it. I think we're in good shape. That oddly enough, my mixer actually, in a way, talks to me. And if you use yours often enough, yours will talk to you too. Um, you'll be able to hear the sounds of it. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. And, huh, we got a long hair in there. It's not mine. I don't have any long hairs. I don't know where that came from. Odd. That's all right. Pull it out. It's not going to hurt anything. So, true story. Um, well, true fact. Hair in and of itself is inert. It cannot make you sick. Um, it cannot hurt you in any way. Even if you like you eat a piece of something at a restaurant and it's got a hair in it. Yeah, that's gross. But that's about the extent of it. It won't hurt you. So, anyhow. That being said, I can tell by feeling it, and, and you'll know too um, when you try it, but see how it's stiff enough that it's still holding my uh, my spoon up, my spatula up, but I can easily move it through. That tells me, just from you know me doing this enough now, that that's good. That, that's good, pipeable, controllable icing. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna put some saran wrap on this over the top of this for right now, get the mixer out of the way and we're gonna make some ganache real quick. All right, hold on. Okay, so we're gonna make some ganache. Now, uh, it only requires two things, really, I, and that's it. And the first thing we need is two thirds a cup, 120 grams of, uh, I'm using semi-sweet chocolate chips but I, and that's what the recipe the one recipe called for and that makes sense is what most ganaches are made of but it also requires a half a cup 125 mil 100 half a cup 125 milliliters of heavy cream that's been warmed now i had this in the microwave and i, I microwaved it for a minute but i only did it in 30 second intervals that way because if you do, if you just let it go all at once it'll boil over so you just pour that over your chocolate chips. You can also use milk chocolate or I mean whatever type you like. And I'm just gonna set that to the side and we're just gonna let it sit there for a couple minutes. While we're doing that, 
while we're waiting on that we can grab our cupcakes that we have right here and I am going to take a melon scoop um, I mean, but you could use almost anything and I'm just gonna make a small divot in these in, in these cupcakes and wow those are super moist um, which is good that's the way it should be and then that way I can take chocolate syrup and put them down in the divot so let me get these out and then we'll do some syruping and then we can should have it should be about time to uh, stir that chocolate up all right so we got our divots done now I'm just gonna take some chocolate syrup I'm just gonna put a little bit in there because why not get that in there like that and then once we do this we can uh, just go ahead and set the cupcakes off to the side and I may be making a world-class mistake and I should have maybe put the ganache in here instead of the syrup because the syrup's a little runny you know so it may go into the cupcake and just completely fill the cupcake although I doubt it or it may just stay like it is which that's what I'm I'm betting on but I mean we'll find out won't we so we got that that full filled I think we're gonna be all right there all right so we got those off to the side now we put that over here back where it was let those sit there now with this ganache so what you want to do when you're making a ganache is you want to take your fork or your spoon or whatever and start in the center and you're gonna mix you're gonna start stirring and you want to start stirring until you see it see how it's starting to get nice and chocolatey there in the center just like such that's what we're looking for and once it starts to do that and it starts working its way out see how it's working its way out then we can start moving forward and start going out of that little tiny circle in the center there and get it mixed up real good So there we go see how we started in the center worked our way out and look at that so we got a nice ganache it's still a little warm though so what we're gonna do is this is why we made it before we put the icing on the uh, cupcakes so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my icing in the piping bag and we can go ahead and get the uh, icing piped on those and then this should be cool enough to uh, pour a little on the top all right so one thing I'm noticing, that syrup is sinking down into the cupcake. So now I know, maybe next time, ganache in the center, uh, chocolate syrup on the top. But that's all right. It all, it's still gonna taste like bananas, chocolate, and icing. So all we're gonna do is take our icing here, and we're gonna put it on just like this. Okay, so um, I, I didn't realize my SD card had cut out uh, while we were icing these, so I'll catch you up to speed. You didn't miss a whole, whole lot. But what I did was I went ahead and put these in the fridge, which gave my icing a chance to harden up a little bit and gave our, our ganache a chance to cool down to room temperature. And as you can see, it's still soft, um, and it'll stay that way until we put it in the fridge. So what we're gonna do, is we're going to grab a spoon and in this case a little spoon a little spoon and I have found more uses for these odd spoons that um, I'm not even sure where they came from but we're gonna put those on top just like such and yeah and I had another thought about these while I was uh, letting these chill and the ganache cool down um, what all was on a banana split? Well, there's the obvious, bananas. There's vanilla ice cream. There is three different flavors that are on at least any banana split I've ever had, and we're gonna be missing one. And that is strawberry. It usually has chocolate, strawberry, um, and pineapple. Well, so I think 
if I go to make these again, which I'm sure I will, we will uh, not do the chocolate syrup on the inside, but a strawberry jam. I think a strawberry jam would be fantastic in the center of this instead of the chocolate. And then as far as the pineapple goes, I'm going twofold because I also made the icing or the whipped topping uh, while you guys weren't looking. And sorry, and, and I'll, I'll leave the ingredients list down below for sure. But my, my whipped topping is really easy to make. I make a bunch of it because I utilize it for a lot of different things um, as far as desserts go. And it's stabilized, so it's good for about a week. Um, and all it is, uh, my normal whipped topping is uh, sugar, third of a cup of sugar at 67 grams, um, two cups of heavy cream at 445 milliliters or grams, a quarter teaspoon of uh, cream of tartar, which is a stabilizer so that way I don't over whip it, at one gram, and then I normally put a teaspoon of vanilla in it. This time I use two teaspoons of pineapple juice. That way it has a hint of pineapple flavor to it. And then I just went ahead and stuck it in my bag. So we got our ganache on there. And now I'm going to take my whipped topping and I'm just going to put a dollop of it on there, right? But now we're just going to take um, some maraschino cherries and put that on the top just like such if I can get all these get these out of here Okay, we got our cherries on top of there and then the last thing I'm going to do is, and we'll just do a couple for the sake of time, is I'm going to put a piece of pineapple on there because why not? I think that adds a bit of fun to it. If I had strawberry slices, I'd put a strawberry slice on there too, but I don't, so we won't. Although I'm a little aggravated about the strawberry filling thing, because I actually have strawberry jam and that would have worked out perfect. But we live, we learn, right? You're actually helping me develop uh, my pretty much my first cupcake ever, um, which is kind of awesome. And it's all about trial and error. What works, what doesn't. Yeah. All right. And there we are, my friends. That is my hour interpretation of a banana split, split cupcake. So what are we gonna do? I am actually gonna put these in the fridge for probably about a half hour or so. I'm sorry, all up in your face. Um, I'm gonna put these in the fridge for about a half hour or so. And then that way the ganache has a time to set. You know, although it looks like it's pretty well set now, but I want it to be firm. And that'll give the icing a little more time and it, it'll give a chance for flavors to blend. So back in the fridge for a half hour. When I come back, we will uh, try one. See how bad it or how good it is. All right, see you in one second. I'm set in the fridge for about a half hour. There we are in all its fame and glory. If I can get it to focus, there we go. And I think they turned out fantastic. Now, one of them has already disappeared because Miss Chris, uh, for those of you who are new, my wife, uh, decided that uh, she was really wanting to try one. And I thought, why not? You know, and she thought they were amazing. I still have yet to try one. She actually thought the chocolates blended well together. She's not even a big fan of buttercream icing, although she likes mine for the most part, but it's just not something she's a big fan of. But see how I was talking earlier about how the, uh, you can spray the, uh, yeah, the muffin or the <laughs> cupcake papers and 
that way they wouldn't stick but see I mean they just don't stick I mean that came out just fine sorry I yeah, I guess that is kind of blurry but yeah they came out just fine you can even still see the ripples in it so I don't quite get that but let's give this bad boy a try and see how we uh, turned out I am gonna smush that down a little bit hmm yeah I think it's safe to say that tastes like a banana split. Now, I do want to show you something. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there you go. The chocolate did not bleed into the uh, cupcake. So, that tells me the chocolate would work. So then you have to say, okay, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> if that worked, do I do chocolate syrup or ganache in the center and a strawberry topping on top I think that would work but I think I'm leaning more towards I am gonna do a strawberry center um, and I'm just gonna use jam like you would buy from the store yeah hmm even though I ate that piece of pineapple I can still taste the pineapple in the whipped topping where I put the pineapple juice in there instead of vanilla. The chocolates balance out nicely. You have the vanilla for the ice cream and the icing, the banana and the cupcake. The cherry on top was phenomenal. Um, as always, it's a maraschino cherry. You can't go wrong with a maraschino cherry. Although, I don't know if I'd want to eat a whole jar of it, it'd make your belly hurt. But uh, yeah, that. If nothing else, it's a good start. Um, that's a great cupcake. I, I am very impressed and very proud of this cupcake. It does well. Um, it, it has all the flavors and attributes of a banana split. Well, it's the strawberry, which will remedy that with the center. Yeah, see, look at that. Didn't, didn't go anywhere. Stayed right where it was supposed to. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, give this a try. They weren't hard to make. Not by any means. They worked well, and uh, I, I guarantee you'll enjoy them. So, until next week, where I still don't have any idea where uh, what we're having for dinner or what we're having for dessert, but we'll figure it out. I know we will. We always do, right? Um, and I, I promise I will be starting to get on a regular schedule. It's just been canning season which coming up soon you'll get to see a couple canning videos I got some really neat stuff uh, that I'm gonna try for the first time one of them is a uh, green pepper and cucumber relish I, that sounds amazing and we're gonna can up a small batch of that and uh, some monkey butter which is a uh, don't tell anybody a rebel recipe not approved by ball uh, but I want to try it I, I want to try it um, I've seen the video I watched a few videos on how to make it and it sounds great and I think it'll be safe. Um, but anyhow, I'm gonna make it by blaming you along for the ride. So next week, no idea what we're doing for dinner. No idea what we're doing for dessert as always, but until then, I love you. I love you very much. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And the fact that you give me a little time out of your day never ceases to amaze me because that's the one thing you can give that you can't get back. And I am honored to be able to spend my time with you. Tell somebody else you love them and that you love them very much. They may need to hear it, you know, and, and it's going to make them feel good inside to hear it. It's going to make you feel good inside to tell them. You make them some of these banana split cupcakes, you're going to have conversation for hours and a friend for life, I guarantee it. So till next week for dinner and dessert, I love you. Talk to you later. All right? Mm-hmm. Bye.